And ESPN.com went through a fun exercise here where they redrafted the entire NFL four rounds from scratch. So if you were to just put all the players back into free agency and into a draft pool, in what order would those players come off the board? And we've got it for you here. Courtney Cronin made the picks for the Vikings rounds one through four. And then when you get to the Vikings pick at 25, what should the hypothetical strategy be here? You guys ready to dive into uh, oh, yeah. a little reckless mm-hmm. speculation, hypothetical speculation, reckless hypothetical. speculation. So here are the rules. Okay. Every current NFL player is available and salary caps don't matter here. So it, you don't have to worry about like one quarterback making more than the other salary caps don't matter here. Okay. In those four picks rounds one through four, each pretend general manager had to select a quarterback, a non quarterback offensive player and a defensive player. The fourth pick was wide open. You could draft a kicker or whatever the hell you want to with the fourth pick. Uh, They used the 2020 draft order with traded picks reversed and a snake draft format. And uh, for the other 20 starters for the, for the rest of your team that you would have to conceivably figure out what to do with the rest of the roster is made up of average level NFL talent. So if you had, if you went through four rounds and, and you had the rest of your roster was average, how would you fill out those four rounds? But we're going to focus on the first round here. I'm just going to fly through the players that were drafted. And then you guys tell me once you get to pick 25, what would your thinking be? Okay. Okay. So here is, here's the list of players who were drafted. Pat Mahomes went number one overall to the Cincinnati Bengals. Russell Wilson went number two to Washington, Lamar Jackson to Detroit, Deshaun Watson to the giants. And then Miami broke the quarterback run with defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, number five. Mm Mm-hmm. Offensive tackle Ronnie Stanley to the Chargers at six. Joey Bosa, pass rusher to Carolina at seven. Drew Brees, Arizona. How about that? Draft a 40-year-old quarterback. Would, let me stop there for a second. Would you? Is that too high for a 40-year-old quarterback, or would you go for it? Yeah, probably too high at this point. I'd go for it. I, oh, you're going for it. I'd go for it. I probably would take, uh, if I was doing a, a redraft, I probably would take the next pick. Who is a Dak, quarterback? Dak Prescott. Yes. To Jacksonville. Now Drew Brees in his prime might take him for sure, but at forty. Yeah, I think if if the if the whole league is up for reach. redraft, it is, it's it's a total I'm not taking an old ridiculous move to draft a forty year quarterback that early. Uh, Dak Prescott to Jacksonville, Nick Bosa to Cleveland, Carson Wentz to the Jets, Aaron Rodgers to Las Vegas. Where he's going to play anyway? John Gruden, and he's going to play there fun. regardless. So that actually makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, that's a realistic move that will actually happen in like a year or two from now. Joe Burrow to Indianapolis, Tom Brady to Tampa. Okay. So Tom Brady staying in Tampa. Again, you're doing a redraft and you're taking a 42, 43 year old quarterback. Denver taking Drew Locke. We have back to back teams taking the quarterback yeah, and, that they have. And by, by the way, that one's a mistake. And I'm sorry, back to back to back. Matt Ryan going 16 to Atlanta. Okay. So uh, staying the same. Kyler Murray to Dallas. I like that one a lot. Teddy Bridgewater to Pittsburgh. Interesting. I don't know if I don't know if I like Teddy in cold weather outdoors i don't know if afc north is the right division for him okay but i guess he did play a cold weather season with the vikings outdoors and play pretty well they went 11 and 5 yeah but before the knee went out or the leg went out it's true so i think i would defer to what you just said based on his medical history now jimmy garoppolo to chicago at 19 christian mccaffrey to the rams at 20 baker mayfield to philadelphia at 21 that's a terrible can you imagine baker mayfield in real life in philadelphia oh my god honestly i can I honestly can't. he would he would quit football after week two. I'm with Judd. I think he it's, play it's, one game at the link. Baker's a lot of things, including mentally really, really weak. He'd never make it. Yeah. Michael Thomas to Buffalo at 22. I believe that's the first wide receiver yeah, off the board. That might be a little late. OK. Sam Darnold to New England. That's a fun pick. Bill Belichick with a with a young quarterback. I still don't know what to seconds. make of Sam Darnold, though, gentlemen. And then Khalil Mack, 24 to New Orleans, which sets up. The Minnesota Vikings, the rest of the NFL's player pool is yeah. open for the Vikings to select. I will note that our friend Courtney Cronin took Ryan Tannehill with the 25th pick. Yep. That's not the player I would choose. But what would your at this point in this hypothetical exercise, what would your logic be sitting here looking at the 25th pick? So is this an exercise in, in actually trying to do a redraft, but still put together the best team possible, y- yeah. young team, up and coming players? Because that's where well, you can do it however you want. Right, I mean, right. But that's where I don't agree with Breeze. I, so like if we're in this for one year, I might take a shot on Breeze. But if this is a real redraft that's going to put together a team for me that I might uh, assemble for a few years, there's no way I'm taking Breeze. Uh, Tannehill has had right now one good year. I could see regression in his future very quickly. I would definitely take 
in a redraft a quarterback. So I would not take any other position. So among the remaining quarterbacks, I would take one. Ryan Tannehill would not be the one that I would take. That would still be that is still yeah. available at this point. And don't give me your picks yet. I'm not. No, that's why but I didn't. Is, but this I is teased good logic. It. Teased it. So all right, Declan, what would your what would your you're sitting here? You got yeah. 24 players off the board. What is your logic at this point? I I I'm thinking for quarterback, but I'm really looking at best player available when I look at all the run of quarterbacks that have already been taken. So I'm not going to reach for one. So I'm I'm more lenient on going towards the best player available. So I'm in the same boat. I to me this is fantasy football at this point. Yeah. Like you're you're drafting for wins and losses, not for fantasy points. But but if this was a fantasy football draft and every player is available, and 17 quarterbacks come off the board in the first 24 picks, which is what happened here. That means there's a lot of non-quarterbacks left that are great at their positions. So the, the only non-quarterbacks that have come off the board are both of the Boses came off the board. Aaron Donald, offensive tackle Ronnie Stanley, Christian McCaffrey. So you get one running backs off the board, one wide receiver in Michael Thomas, and then Khalil Mack, pass rusher Khalil Mack. Yep. So I think my strategy would be I would definitely – quarterback is the most important position, so I'm on the hunt. But I also know that – 17 teams have already filled their need at quarterback. So like those 17 teams are not going to draft another quarterback. I can, I, I, I'm only fighting with the other teams for the rest of the quarterbacks. It's a snake draft. So I also get to pick earlier in the second round, right? Mm -hmm. There's one quarterback I'm for sure sizing up here. And I don't know if it's the same one that the Judd has his, his mind on, but we'll get to it. But I think my strategy would be if I see 17 quarterbacks off the board, I'm probably looking to take, like, I'm not going to then take the 18th best guy at that position unless I think somebody's missing out on some value. I'm probably looking to take the second best offensive lineman. I'm looking to take a pass rusher or something. That's what that's what my mindset is. In today's be. league, I firmly believe that if this is – so if this is fantasy football, what you're saying makes perfect sense. But because I, I'm assuming it's not, that I'm actually building a team, I need to take right now with – 17 quarterbacks gone, the best possible quarterback left in my mind. Now, now fantasy, I wouldn't do that. But I, I would take the best offensive player that I possibly can. But if I'm actually building a team that I'm going to put the, put the people on the field and play, I'm going to grab the best quarterback that I think is still there. But what, but here's where I kind of disagree. And I'm like, we're, we'll reveal our picks in a second here. But if, if you've got the option right now between the 18th best quarterback because 17 are off the board yep. or the second best left tackle. And then you can pick the 20th best quarterback in the second round as a couple more come off the board. I'd rather have the second best left tackle and be at the front of that run of left tackles that comes off the board. And then, and then just take the next, like if I have to take the I 20th get, best quarterback, point, yeah. uh, like the, to me, the gap between the second best left tackle and potentially the eighth best left tackle is wider than, the gap between the 18th best quarterback and like the 21st best quarterback. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where my logic is at. So with that said, where are you picking? The whole league outside of those 24 players is available for you. Okay. I am, d despite the points that you just made, which are uh, fine, fine points, Thank I'm you. still going to take a quarterback. Thank I'm you. going to ignore what you just said. Although you had, a, you had, you had a good point, point yesterday. <laughs> Courtney Cronin, I want to give you credit. Yeah, Courtney you, Cronin gave you, you a good point. You know that you did too. Oh, did I? In the middle of it, she backs into good point. Yeah, you you had a you asked a question. It was like your third question to her, and she answered it. And she did the same thing that I think she did with me, which was she eventually got around to that's a good point, Phil. I'll trust but you. But it was halfway through. So the good question, good point standing. I noticed are... that you that you missed that, and I thought to myself, that's not really fair because I took advantage of mine. Nice. So I now have 15 good questions or good points on the year. You have 13. Yep. Rami had nine. Uh, Declan's still looking for his first on the season. That's okay. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. All right, sorry. Who are you going to pick? It's very tough judge? for the producer to get good points. Uh, I am going to make a controversial pick, a pick that I think might be widely, roundly criticized, but I'm trying to build something special here with this redraft, and I'm going to take two of them. I like it. I'm taking two at 25. Young quarterback who I still really like at 25, I think, to quote Mel Kuyper. He's a good value right there. Um, I think two is going to be really damn good, and I'm going to take him at 25. And now if I'm actually building a team, gentlemen, I've got, in my mind, my quarterback for eight years. Yeah, Declan, who are you taking? I'm looking at Stafford. I think I really, really like Matt Stafford here um, because – 
he's essentially going to be the last really good quarterback available. And if you, if you look in the ones that would be up for grabs, Cam Newton, Josh Allen, like you're now sabotaging yourself at quarterback, yeah, no that, matter how good your infrastructure exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> so, so for me, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to take Matt Stafford because I don't think of all the teams that still have to take a quarterback, I think he'd be the first one off the board. So I go Matt Stafford. I'm trying to find I'm just scrolling down here. Jo- uh, Josh Allen, <laughs> it's funny. Josh Allen went to Buffalo yeah. in the second round. Went back to Buffalo. So, all right, I'm with Judd. I take Tua. Oh, wow. I take Tua here. And and so to go back on my logic, I don't think Tua is the 18th best quarterback. I think Tua is probably one of the 10 best quarterbacks. So I see a ton of value here. Yep. To Declan's point, if the quarterbacks remaining were like Josh Allen, Matt Stafford, like Matt Stafford's really good. Ryan Tannehill kind of in the same boat. But I think Tua, it's not guaranteed, but I think Tua has a chance to be on like – the Mount Rushmore of NFL's great quarterbacks for this upcoming era. I think it's going to be, especially once Rodgers is gone and Brady's gone and, you know, the Matt Ryans, like that whole group and Drew Brees. I Kyler think Murray. It's, it, you're, yeah, you're probably looking at Pat Mahomes. You're looking at, you know, Russell Wilson's going to be around for a while, but you're looking at Pat Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, and then a Kyler Murray or a Tua, these guys who are mobile, yep. but they can throw the ball down the field. And so I, I would... I would take the 18th quarterback off the board here with the mindset that I think he's actually a top 10 quarterback right. soon, and I would get him for X amount of years, even with some of the injury question marks. So here's how the actual draft play. Oh, by the way, um, if if it wasn't Tua, I would actually go probably like David Bakhtiari or that's what I was looking at, or yeah. like Taron Armstead, one of these top left tackles. Bakhtiari is getting up there now, though, in age, right? He's 28. He's only 28. Thought he had some back problems and things, but okay. And he can chug a beer like no other. Yeah. If I'm putting together yeah, a drinking team, lives in Wisconsin, he should be able to. It's on. So I, w- I would say if 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 I wasn't going to take Tua in that spot, I would yep. rather have a top three or top four pass blocking left tackle to to put on my team and start there. So here's how the actual hypothetical draft played out the rest of the first round. Vikings took Ryan Tannehill. Houston winds up with DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Way to go, Bill O'Brien. Because they just traded him for nothing, basically. Oh, you got David Johnson. What do you mean? Seattle winds up with Mike Evans. Baltimore winds up with Matthew Stafford. Tyreek Hill to Tennessee. Tua to the Packers at 30 yeah, in Marv. this draft. Yeah. It's just sickening yeah, that Marv. that would happen. And, like, how does like how does Tua fall that far? How, how is he, like, the 20th quarterback off the board in this thing? What's wrong with people? Well, pe- people d- uh, definitely had different opinions of how – of what they thought of the process of this draft, right? Like how would you like take- Drew Brees going where Drew Brees went is definitely somebody thinking that this idea of this draft is just for 2020. I get, but but how would you take Tua over Baker Mayfield? I mean, sorry, Baker Mayfield over Tua know. with 21. It's yeah, it's goofy. Why are you taking? All due respect to Teddy Bridgewater, like when we talk about question marks and upside, I think I think the question marks are very similar and the upside for Tua is higher than the well, upside for Teddy Bridgewater. Well, Drew, I love Bridgewater. But. Drew Locke in, in this redraft to Denver at 15 over Kyler Murray at 17 to Dallas makes zero, zero, zero sense. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with these people. Uh, George Kittle to San Francisco at 31. That's like the sixth team that has just taken their own guy. And then Stefan Gilmore, the first cornerback off the board to Kansas City. Just for fun, the Vikings wound up with, in this draft, Courtney Cronin had the Vikings taking Ryan Tannehill in the first round, Devontae Adams, wide receiver, in the second round, which is kind of fun. Um, and then I actually don't have the rest of the list in front of me, but that's those are the two players they take in the first two rounds. Eric Armstead would be the defensive end in the third round, and then Harrison Smith. Oh, the Harrison round Smith. Pick. And nice. and going at 69 in the third round, nice. insert your own jokes there, the children is the Miami Dolphins taking Kirk Cousins. So Kirk Cousins fell that far. He is the one, two, three, four. He is the fifth pick of round three in the redraft. Wow. Justin just Herbert ahead, went ahead of him. Just ahead of one pick ahead of the L.A. Chargers uh, representative taking Daniel Jones. That's what people think of Kirk Cousins. That seems there. there's a few of these you can make a case for like, all right. I'm not taking Josh Allen over Kirk Cousins. I'm not taking Justin Herbert over Kirk Cousins. I don't think I'm taking Drew Locke over Kirk Cousins right now. Yeah, it's interesting. Although Keen Fahey, who's back doing quarterback evaluations, Keen Fahey had Drew Locke as like a top 10 quarterback last year, but he only played six games or something. Well, and he might be fine. I just don't know that. Yeah. So there it is. It would be a fun exercise if we just treated the NFL like, like a like a Madden season. You could just blow everything up and redraft the entire thing or like a fantasy season. But that's a wrap on this episode of Purple Daily. Try to envision what the Vikings would look like with Tua Tagovailoa as their starting quarterback. 
be a lot of fun. Or us just calling them two up. It'll be, be super fun. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You can find us also the Mackie and Judd podcast where we dive into segments like action movie rewind, uh, WrestleMania rewind, and write that down predictions on Wednesdays, Apple, Spotify, and scorenorth.com. See you next time.